Welcome to Match Day Asia. It's time for the quarterfinals in the East Zone of the AFC Champions League. And we're going to be looking at what we can expect from the games that are going to be coming your way very soon. Now we've got two games to look ahead to, four teams to cover, so let's get into it. So the first quarterfinal match we'll be looking at has the potential to be an absolute classic. Two of the competition's unbeaten sides, Beijing FC and Ulsan Hyundai, are coming together for the first time since the group stage in 2012 when Ulsan Hyundai beat Beijing both home and away on their way to finishing top of their group. It was also the year that Ulsan went on to pick up their first AFC Champions League title. But in the here and now, Beijing FC stormed into the round of 16 after going through the group stage with a club record 5 ACL wins in a row before a 1-0 draw against Chiang Rai United on match day 6 saw their 100% record come to an end. But the 16 points they picked up was another club record that they've managed to achieve in this season's campaign. They then saw off the challenge of FC Tokyo with a solitary Alan strike being enough to defeat the Group F runners-up and making it into their first ever AFC Champions League quarter-final. Now, having already secured a couple of new club records in the group stage, they'll be looking to create even more history in the competition by extending their seven-match unbeaten run this season. Now, Beijing FC are a side who enjoy keeping the ball and passing it out from the back. They have averaged about 60% possession in their six matches in Qatar so far. They've displayed a flexibility in their tactical setup in their matches as well, going with a 4-diamond-2, a 4-3-2-1, and even a back-5 in their last group game against Chiang Rai United. Their round of 16 tie against Tokyo, though, saw them start with a 4-2-3-1. But whatever formation they choose, their average formations have displayed a trend that they've employed throughout the competition. And that is that they generally look to control the midfield with numbers in the central positions as the likes of Renato Augusto, Zhang Shizhe, Fernando and Jonathan Vieira look to dominate games from those areas of the pitch. Now their width then to come from their fullbacks, Wang Kang and Li Lei, while Kim Min Jae provides a strong level of security in central defence. But focusing back on that midfield, and it's Vieira who has been at his creative best with an ACL leading 4 assists to go along with his 17 chances created. Renato Augusto has also been in excellent form for Beijing with 2 goals and 3 assists so far. Now his quality was evident once again in that match against FC Tokyo as they made that small tactical change in the second half, mainly moving him out to the right hand side, which paid dividends as it provided Beijing with the breakthrough against the disciplined and stubborn FC Tokyo defence. That match also saw Alan picking up his fourth goal of the campaign to stay stop of the scoring charts for Beijing. The quality of their squad gives Bruno Genesio plenty of options with his approach to matches and he'll be hoping that they can step up to the plate once again when they come up against an equally impressive Ulsan Hyundai side who have been just as consistent in their run to the quarterfinals. The K-League runners-up have been in solid form in Qatar and they also made it into the round of 16 on the back of a six-match unbeaten run in the group stage. Their dominant 3-0 win over Melbourne victory in the round of 16 then extended their winning run to six matches while maintaining Ulsan's record of being the best attacking side in the AFC Champions League this season with 17 goals scored on their way to qualifying for their first quarterfinal since 2012. On the tactical front, just like Beijing FC, Kim Do Hun's side enjoy possession of the ball and they've averaged about 63% of it in their time in Qatar. Now they normally set up in a 4-2-3-1 shape, although they have used a 4-3-3 in a couple of games and they have plenty of quality in the squad with Sin Jin Ho and Yoon Bit Garam controlling play from the centre of the park. Yoon Bit Garam himself is having a fantastic campaign with 4 goals to his name in the competition along with his 17 chances created and 2 assists for his side. Now Won Du Jae could also come into the side after featuring against Perth on match day 6 and scoring the second goal in that win over Melbourne. The Ulsan squad has also been strengthened by the return of Kim Tae Hwan and Jung Seung Hyun to support Dave Bultui and Kim Ki Hee in defence. In the attacking areas, Kim In Sung and Lee Chung Yong will probably continue to line up either side of Jun Yunaga, who had a fine season domestically with 26 K League goals to his name. On the continent, though, he is perhaps being unshorn by the super sub Bjorn Jonsson, whose brace against Melbourne took his tally to four goals to go level with Yoon Bit Garam as Ulsan's top scorer. By the way, those four goals all came from his last two appearances off the bench, the same bench which has allowed Ulsan to maintain a level of consistency and quality throughout their time in Qatar while keeping their key players fresh for the knockout stages. Oh, by the way, Beijing and Ulsan also met in the group stage in 2009 with Ulsan winning both those games as well. So it's Ulsan with 4 wins from 4 against Beijing FC who hold the upper hand in terms of the history between these two. But will any of this matter in 2020? Thankfully, we won't have to wait much longer to find out. 
move on to our second game now and that involves a clash between familiar foes with Vissel Kobe and Suwon Samsung Blue Wings set to meet for the third time in this season's competition. Uh, two sides qualified from Group G after Suwon joined Vissel in the knockouts with a 2-0 win over the Japanese side in their final match in the group. The first meeting between the sides, however, back in February, ended with a 1-0 win to Vissel Kobe thanks to a 90th minute winner from Kyogo Furuhashi. Now, after their group stage efforts, Vissel Kobe then took care of Shanghai SIPG in the round of 16 with a comfortable 2-0 win, sending them into their first Champions League quarterfinal in their debut season. Now, it's really interesting if we look at what we can expect from Vissel Kobe tactically. Their head coach, Atsuhiro Miura, has actually experimented with uh, several different formations in the group stage. At times, he's gone with a 3-5-2. He's also employed a 4-4-2 and a 4-1-4-1 in their last group game against Suwon. And then he used a 4-2-3-1 against Shanghai SIPG in the round of 16. Now, with qualification for the knockouts having been secured early on in Qatar, Miura saw that as an opportunity to make several lineup changes to keep his key players fresh and well-rested for the round of 16. And that seemed to make a big difference against what looked like a fatigued Shanghai SIPG side. Now, despite all the changes, their playing pattern seemed to follow a similar trend of using their left flank in the majority of their attacking moves, with an average of 41.7% of their attacks coming down that side of the pitch in the group stage. That continued against SIPG, with 50.3% of their attacks against the Chinese side coming from that area of the playing field as well. Perhaps it's no real surprise that they like to build down the left, with Andres Iniesta preferring to run games from an inside left channel on the pitch. I mean, he also has excellent players in support on the left side, with Gotoku Sakai and Kyogo Furuhashi generally stationed on that area of the turf. Now, Iniesta has shown his quality in his appearances so far, with two goals, one assist and eight key passes. And Vissel usually rely on his ability to change games for them, but there's a bit of an injury doubt regarding his availability for this quarterfinal match. So if he is unavailable, then the responsibility for Vissel's attacking play will fall even more on the shoulders of Furuhashi with two goals, one assist, four chances created, and Douglas, who might only have one goal, but he has created nine chances for Vissel, which is one more than Iniesta has managed in this campaign. Hotaru Yamaguchi is another player to watch for with his excellent ball retention and ball usage, key to his ability to dictate the tempo of the game from central midfield. Vissel are also a side who like to have the ball. They averaged about 60% possession in their four games since the restart. So that should make this another interesting aspect to look out for with this game and Suwon and how they employ a contrasting style of play in the Champions League this season. Now, tactically, Suwon have gone with a 3-5-2 starting formation with both their wing-backs, Lee Ki Jae and Kim Tae Hwan involved in their build-up and attacking phases down the flanks. The two of them also give Suwon something different in terms of their playing profile, with Lee providing width and crosses from the left, while Kim Tae Hwan, at times playing as an inverted wing-back, tends to drift in field and is encouraged to have shots at goal with his left foot, which is exactly how he scored his first Champions League goal. A sweetly struck left-footed drive from just outside the box against Yokohama F. Marinos. Now, Kim Min Woo with one goal, one assist and 14 key passes, and Ko Seung Bum with seven interceptions and seven key passes have also excelled for them in midfield with their quality and work rate. They generally sit in front of Han Suk Jong who protects the spaces in front of his defense. And he also got a goal for himself in that game against Yokohama F. Marinos. Im Sang Hyuk with his two ACL goals and Kim Gun Hee with a goal and assist from just 106 minutes on the pitch have filled in really well up front in the absence of their K-League top scorer Adam Taggart. In fact, Suwon have been playing without any foreigners in their lineup in Qatar and their manager Park Kun Ha, himself a two-time Asian club champion as a player, has done a great job with the side since he's come in. Now, Suwon may have started off the Champions League in poor form earlier this year, but since the restart, they are unbeaten and continued that run with a dramatic 3-2 win over Yokohama in the round of 16. Now, if they continue their unbeaten run against Vissel Kobe, Suwon will then make it two Champions League semi-final appearances from their last two campaigns after also qualifying for that stage back in 2018. So that's all we've got for you on this episode of Match Day Asia. I hope you enjoy the matches from the quarterfinals coming your way very soon. Remember that you can keep up with all the latest from the competition by following the AFC on its social and digital media channels. I'll see you again soon, but for now, it's goodbye.